And a good Wednesday, everyone. I'm Fox 35 Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Jamie King here for you in studio track in the tropics. And seemingly now we're indulging upon a secondary peak, if you will, of the Atlanta hurricane season. We're firing on all cylinders. Nothing close to Florida or the connected states right now, but that might be changing as we show you Hurricane Lisa crowned this morning. Moments after that, we got a Hurricane Martin. That'll become a cat too. Notice staying far removed from land and Hurricane Lisa down here impacting Belize right now. This 20 percent, I'm going to get to that in a minute. My concern is where this area of low pressure that could be developing over the next five days. The chance is low, but I bet you bottom dollar that number will continue to rise as conditions get a bit more favorable, uh, but clearly no threat to the U.S. at this juncture, right? we got to wait a few days to see what's going to happen with this thing. We're on top of it for you. I uh, do want to again share the very latest with you as far as things are concerned with impactful weather now across Central America. I'm talking about Hurricane Lisa in Belize. You can see here not a very well defined category one hurricane, but it's a hurricane nonetheless blowing in the Belize city as I speak to you right now. You can see here as we get you on in the eight o'clock this evening winds at 85 miles per hour. So it's flexing some might pretty powerful storm and it looks like it winds up longer term through the very far southwestern Gulf of Mexico winds at 30. At that point, it looks like it goes into almost kind of a spiral and begins to diminish could get picked up by a trough of low pressure coming in through northern mainland Mexico and then sheared apart and ushered back away closer to the Gulf South, but certainly not like it is right now as far as intensity is concerned. Uh, tracking things for you now I want to open up the uh, satellite views for you. Take it down, show you that area being impacted right now. Beautiful, beautiful stretch of coastline here in Belize. Great scuba diving, great fishing. I've been down there a few times and they are hurting hurricane hardened down there. They get a quite a few storms uh, varying uh, degrees of that season to season, but uh, very heavy rain. The concern for some mud slides and some of the higher terrain out there in Belize. And as we show you now, the water vapor imagery shows all the high moisture content in vicinity of our circulating Lisa. On the outskirts of that, that's all that dry air. So uh, eventually, depending on how much or how strong this is by the time it crosses southern Yucatan, gets to the southwestern Gulf, I mean, time will tell. Uh, we could start to draw and drag in some of that dry air, and, and that's where we see Lisa's demise. Now, one thing we want to watch again, we know we got Lisa, we got Martin. Uh, this is a, a great product, and it depicts these pink areas showing the, the greatest potential of tropical development. And you'll notice here something we've seen in the modeling over the last few days now and some type of energy coming out uh, around the Southern Caribbean, uh, Eastern Caribbean, somewhere in that general uh, region there as we, we look at the globe as a whole. And that energy coming up and through maybe toward the Southeastern Bahamas, that's the beautiful Turks and Caicos or, or slightly just due east of there, maybe north of San Juan, Puerto Rico. But this looks to be a better environment for the development of something tropical. Well, what does that mean? Well, you got energy. You fuse together all the factors that go into play, right? First things first, we need an environment that can support a tropical system. So we survey water temperatures and you need at least 79 Fahrenheit to get these tropical systems chugging along. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I don't believe I am. We've got plentiful warmth in the waters right now. Straits of Florida, Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, 84 Fahrenheit. Boy, that's like bath water. And you come up north of that and through the Bahamas, right at about 82 Fahrenheit out to the distant Atlantic and closer to the state of Florida. So the concern is that this nugget of energy, this low pressure, comes up and out of the Caribbean. This is the GFS model uh, with the potential to get going here, right? I mean, we've been talking about this now uh, for a couple, two, three days, but uh, low pressure developing with possible impacts to Florida. That means obviously uh, the wind and the rain. GFS model, the one I'm showing you here, has been on top of this for days on end now, right? Giving us that signal. We saw it last week, we said, ah, Forget about it. Not going to happen. Well, don't let your guard down, friends, as we show you the circulation here in the Bahamas. This is next Monday, Tuesday, November 7th into the 8th, and that's a little too close for comfort there. Shows us a, a developing system, one that, that may be what we call kind of a hybrid system or, or maybe subtropical, not fully tropical. Regardless, though, they all produce wind. They all produce rain. And with the flooding we had from Ian here in the Sunshine State, we don't need any of that. The St. John's River Basin's fine. Finally dropping below flood stage in many locations. 
But when we talk about tropical rain, I always tell you here on the broadcast, we talk tropics when it rains, it pours. That may end up being a super soaker type forecast for us here in central Florida. So let's we take a look at that potential here for the rainfall stacking up. You can see in the forecast models, not really flashing much yet in the Monday and Tuesday, depending on where this thing is, how strong it is. It may end dragging a bunch of drier down the gut of the state. And we get squat around here, but in turn, if it draws closer and the winds are profiled right, enough moisture funnels in, then it's a totally different ball game. So we're on top of that for you. Want to take a look at the swell forecast and uh, shows us whatever that feature is, whatever it does become, uh, is going to produce some rather high seas as we see it now. You can see that we've got quite a bit of uh, weather action over the open Atlantic. Let me get out of the way and just show you here. You can see the sea heights there, uh, probably in excess of about 15 to even 20 feet uh, when it is all said and done. So a lot of that swell may try to radiate a little bit closer to us here in central Florida. And it looks like uh, some of that uh, open ocean energy, some of that swell from a distance uh, may try to get into the central Florida beachfront. Regardless of what happens, it looks like a bunch of wind and of course the potential for the very high seas and all that tropical rainfall. I do want to slip you now into our exclusive Fox model as it shows a couple different things. We have Martin and we have Lisa now back across uh, Belize, the impactful regions experiencing the, the high volume of wind now and all that flooding rain. Watch though, just south of the islands here in the Eastern Caribbean, you can see the energy coming together and then rising northbound. And that's where we start to see that process mixing and mingling with the high water temperatures. That's of concern. And you can see on the bigger view here as we take you on in, how everything just kind of starts to slowly come together. One thing I'm watching though is this incoming trough up front. Sometimes they can sweep these features far away from us here uh, in Florida along the eastern seaboard. Sometimes these are our saving graces. The Fox model shows Saturday at 6 p.m. We've got a, a little something there in the Florida panhandle. So if something were developed, maybe that trough starts to really mix in and influences the overall development and ultimately the track. I mean, a sweep to the Atlantic, a fish storm out to sea uh, type solution here, the end game. Uh, that would be uh, certainly very welcomed here in Florida and along the Atlantic seaboard. Rainfall, you can see how that trains on in from the Caribbean. Uh, lots and lots of it. And we talk about the potential for tropical development as we go to Thursday. And the Friday through the weekend, you can see these areas developing now, uh, which could favor some tropical development. So again, as I leave you now here in our platform, I want to tell you uh, we're watching, we're tracking. We don't know a lot of just yet about what's happening down there in the Caribbean, but the modeling has been insisting on some type of development close to Florida. Some of it's a little more out to sea, others really not spiking up until it maybe gets near the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So uh, much to do in the coming days, and that would be tracking, advising and keeping you all up to date. So we got Lisa, we got Martin, both staying away from the U.S., but it's that one hot spot I showed you, 20% chance of development through here. Things could change rapidly. So keep it here to Fox 35. You can depend on us. Always watching, always tracking. I'm Fox 35 Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Jamie King. That's all for now from the Fox 35 Storm Center. Have a great day.